Uh, maybe some of you have seen this uh, from UCAP before. We were pretty notorious in the past for taking this wherever we went. Uh, but a lot of you it might be new to, and I think it probably is. There's some new equipment that we'll show you. Um, but really, it's electronic aids to daily living. And as you can see there, uh, uh, what we hope you guys will learn today is some of the different products out there from really low cost to high cost, <coughs> what it will do, uh, how you can go out to your consumers' houses and uh, figure out solutions for them if they're having problems controlling their environment, no matter what that is. Uh, characteristics, as you can see there. Um, discussion, we'll, we'll show all the different kinds. Uh, a couple demonstrations from Brian and I, and then we've got uh, some video of some users that we'll try to play for you, uh, if you can hear it, uh, where, where it's really changed their lives. There we go, environmental control unit, where, where now we call it electronic aids to daily living. Uh, like most things, we change the name over time as, as people start to think, well, environmental controls, we must just want to control the heat. You know, but it, but it goes way beyond that. So they uh, changed the term to uh, a more usable term, electronic aids to daily living, meaning the lights, television, uh, all sorts of things like that. As it says there, it helps sell the case. Um, usually insurance, Medicare, Medicaid doesn't cover any of this. Uh, although it's been tried to go, we've passed it through before, but I don't know if they've ever funded any. Do you, Brian? Oh, you have had it funded twice? Oh, I take that back. Uh, and we'll get into this a little bit. Now they're built into chairs. Uh, and that, is that how you got yours funded before? Yeah, they're both funded as part of the chair. As part of the wheelchair. Um, now they're, they're starting to become built into the chairs. So if you think of your uh, daily life, what do you control most of? I mean, we, we call people every day, a couple times a day, right? Uh, control lights, go home, watch TV, turn on the VCR or DVD player, um, open doors, as you can see, everything up there. Uh, it's just everything that we do in our daily lives. Uh, become, uh, put yourself in Brian's situation. Uh, you don't have anything to control things. Uh, independence, right, is what we're all about. And uh, changes where Brian can be completely independent. He comes to work each day for UCAT, and uh, we help him out with a little snack here and there, and, but otherwise he, he does everything by Basically, himself. Basically, once I'm up in the chair with the controls I've got, I can do 99% of everything I need. That'll, I can open the doors, I come to work. It, one of the switches I've got here, front door opens. If another one, the middle door, door in the hallway opens for me, I can turn lights on and off, I can control the TV and stuff when I'm at home. Basically, it gives me control of 90% of the things I need to do. Without it, I'd be having to wait for somebody else to do all the stuff, so. It's the difference between me being able to be independent and get around and do what I need to do by, by myself and having to have somebody else do it for me. It's made a huge difference in my life. It's, it's what, you know, without it, you can't do anything, you're stuck, so. Without them, I don't know what I'd be doing, so. Well, and you can see a list of everything, uh, well, not everything, but uh, kind of touch on what they can do. Increase independence, I mean, that, that's all that really needs to be up there. Reduce personal care costs, we'll get into that in just a little bit. Uh, we talked about insurance, Medicare, Medicaid not funding it, but we've had a lot of success with uh, uh, the independent living funding uh, head guy funding a lot of this uh, equipment. So we can start out really low cost. We can find uh, on x10.com, we can get a uh, controller. I don't want to unplug my units. Uh, uh, this technology is called X10. Uh, it's been around for years and years, uh, since the 70s, right? So basically is what this does. This sends a signal. This specific alarm or uh, remote here has eight buttons, on for number one and off for number one. Number two has on and off. So as we go down there, we can even switch it across so it could control 16 devices. So we hit a button on this. Uh, let me see one that you'll be able to see. I press the button, the light comes on on the table. So what this is doing is sending a signal. 
over to another unit that's plugged in the wall anywhere in the house. So maybe behind a couch. Uh, it's this little unit here. Um, it, it's kind of finicky, but it's great technology. Uh, so this ends uh, to this unit that say we plug it behind the couch. But let's say, let's say we want to control this lamp upstairs in our house. We take this other unit that you can see you just plug a little lamp into the bottom of it. You take that upstairs, plug that in, and so what happens is this sends a signal to the receiver. That receiver sends another signal out through the house wiring to that other unit to turn the light on or off. So you can see it turned the light off. So I can go in on x10.com and be careful because sometimes they switch back and forth from uh, uh, bikini type uh, surveillance to true uh, environmental controls. But I can get uh, a palm pad, a receiver, and maybe two of these lamp modules for around $50. So let's say we have somebody in a wheelchair. Uh, they just have a hard time reaching up, flipping the lights on and off. They can access any remote control, uh, like to control the TV. We can go into their house, give this to them, mount it on their wheelchair or whatever, plug that in, a couple of these, uh, maybe to a lamp, a fan, and a heater. And in 10 minutes or less, they're controlling a, a good portion of their environment. So that's not bad for 50 bucks. They can be very low cost. But how do we choose between these really inexpensive units and the more expensive units? So the more that we want to control, the cost really starts to climb. Uh, as I said, we can maybe get down into the $50 area here, see one of the little dots. I talked about this other unit being $5,000. The other thing that really starts affecting the cost <coughs> is when we get into being able to have to control things by a single or dual switch. If they can't use their hands, then we start getting into the more expensive units where we're going to have to be able to do things by switch access or by voice, voice access, and that's where the price starts climbing quickly. Plus controlling a hospital bed, that will bump it up uh, $1,500. A uh, telephone, maybe another 1000 to $1,500. Uh, it starts climbing pretty quick once we get past the uh, base unit. So, so how do we decide what device is right for that person? As probably each of you, is all you go in, when you go into your consumer's homes, first you see what they're able to do, right? You see uh, their functionality. Um, can you hit this button? Uh, can you control a, a normal remote to change the channels on your TV? Oh, not really. I can't apply enough pressure. Okay, let's kind of move on to the next little criteria. Uh, can, you can hit buttons fine, right? Maybe a, uh, a button like this. If they can't hit that, the little micro switch. All sorts of buttons that we use determine what uh, that individual is able to do. And then we determine what they need to uh, access in their home what they're looking to control. Maybe it's only their TV. I just want to change the channels on my TV. I don't care about the lights or a fan or, or a telephone or whatever. So we see uh, what that person wants to do. Uh, how much is there to spend? Some of these little $50 units, the, the family will pick those up on occasion. Um, some of your centers might have small budgets for things like that, I don't know. Finally, we decide which affordable device will work best as we do for probably most all of our um, assessments when we go into people's homes. Uh, what's the most affordable? They can't open the door. They can pull a, a, a rope that's connected to the door. Well, that's $3 rather than the $2,000 door opener. So same idea here. Uh, if they just want to change the channels on their, their TV, no sense in getting them a $3,000 unit when a little uh, $60 unit will work fine for them. <clears throat> So we talked about the uh, X10 a little bit, how it communicates over the house wiring. Um, let's see, handheld remotes. I'll, I think my next slide shows different remotes and different things that will control that. Keychain pendants. We can get little small ones here that we can mount on wheelchairs and people can hang around their neck. Just controls two units, two lights. Uh, we set these up on occasion. Set those on a wall, it's uh, motion activated. So somebody might roll into a room with their wheelchair and the light just automatically flips on for them. 
uh, all sorts of things that are able to control the lights. And there's uh, software that you can put on the <coughs> PC where you can set up so that things will work timed so you can set up so that the lights come on 15 minutes before you get up in the morning, go off 10 minutes after you, you leave the house, that type of thing. You can program it so that all that kind of stuff could, can happen automatically through the computer. And basically, it downloads it to, to a module there, and it, that module then will remember what it's been programmed to do, whether the computer's on or off. Yeah, you just connect a USB here, program everything on your computer. I want my bedroom light to come on at 6 AM gradually to wake me up. I want my coffee pot to turn on at uh, 6.15 to start the coffee for me. Uh, you unplug your computer so it's not running all the time. And this is what sends out all the codes, uh, depending on what time it is. Keeps track of the time and all, all the uh, coding that you put into it. And again, not very expensive. So some of the different remotes, we have the uh, eight in, in one remote. So you can control your TV, VCR, cable, whatever you want to control in there. Plus there's the X10 button. So most of this was designed just for, uh, I guess, the lazy people that uh, changing the channels on their TV, hit their lights. So we've also installed this one uh, on the far left, the top side. That controls four different ones. It's a, kind of a credit card size one. I don't have one right now. But that's a great one to mount on a wheelchair somewhere so people can have access to four different uh, functions or lights in their home. Uh, the buttons are really easy to press. Sometimes we build them up a little bit uh, if they can't get their knuckle or finger down inside of that. And it, it's done a really good job. Four is, is a good number for people. I mean, they come in, turn on the light in the front room, their living room, maybe a fan. Uh, it takes care of most of the needs of, of people in there in a basic Media. home. So you usually get into at least in the house and you're not going into a dark house all the time. We've uh, in the past used a lot of these X10 cameras. Pretty small, sends a wireless signal, and that will send a fairly good signal, although a lot of times it has a lot of static in it. Uh, there's no audio to it, uh, but it's done a pretty good job for people. We'll install it outside of their door. If they're in bed, a lot of the... It'll do audio. Oh, it will do <laughs> audio. Uh, so if they're in bed for most of the day, somebody knocks on the door, uh, they can switch their TV over to a video feed, see who's at the door, and then if they have a door opener or electric strike, uh, they can hit the button if they decide to let that person in or not. This is a wireless camera uh, that is controlled just through a router. I'm not even hooked to the internet right now, so we can purchase a router for oh, a real cheap one, 30 bucks up to $100. Uh, put this in a completely dark room, and it will see probably 50 feet, uh, kind of a black and white type look to it. It does really, really good in low light, where these X10 cameras had a, a pretty difficult time. They sold a low light camera, but it didn't do very good. This one has tiny little infrared lights around the outside, uh, and you could see somebody that came to your door pitch black. You'd see exactly who it is. There'd be no question if you knew that person. Uh, that one was $89 through Amazon. So pretty good little camera. Uh, we don't have it set up yet, but you can set it up to your iPhone, Android, iPad. Uh, if you're away from home or if they're there in bed, they could just look at it over their uh, iPhone or iPad or whatever it might be. So it's got a, uh, a scanning feature. We'll just go back and forth, scan your yard if you'd like it to. Uh, but it has a lot of little uh, controls that you can go into, set up different things up to nine cameras. You can see up there number one is uh, highlighted. So you can set up nine cameras. Uh, this X10 Active Home software, that's what Brian was talking about where you can go in and set up scenes in your house where a light would come on at a certain time of day, turn off. It, it downloads the, the codes, of the, it, the time zone you're in, and you can actually program it to automatically come on 15 minutes before sunrise and go off a half hour after, or same thing with sunset, so. And then it keeps track of when the sunset is. It keeps track of when it is. Right, exactly. Uh, and there are batteries in there that keeps it from, like you say, yours is maybe coming on at two o'clock in the afternoon, power goes out and it gets off a little bit at yeah. a time. Uh, 
Right. Yeah, it, it will, it, you can download all that information to it and it'll follow it. Uh, we've kind of gone over this also as I've jumped ahead a little bit. Under $100, we can go in and set up somebody's home just for the basic controls. Smart link. Uh, we've talked about X10 technology and how it was uh, quite old. Um, this smart link is kind of the new one. It'll work both with radio frequency, which uh, we haven't really gone over, but uh, what this sends out, kind of like a garage door opener as opposed to uh, a TV remote that sends an infrared signal. But what's great about these is uh, they're a dual mesh, mesh network, so they work on the, the radio frequency, but they also work over the router in your home with Wi-Fi access. Um, they actually will send a signal to themselves that don't even have to have the network. They send out a, a, an RF signal as well as the power line signal so that they're a lot more reliable, they're considerably more expensive. The X10 lap modules go for 12 to 15. Um, the SmartLink Insteon products stay closer to $40 a piece, so there's a definite increase in price, but they're a, a lot more reliable and it seems to be the way the industry's headed. The X10, I think, is slowly fading out of the picture. They're starting to discontinue a lot of their products. Um, a lot of the ECU manufacturers haven't caught up yet. Fortunately, there are modules available that will translate X10 to, to SmartLink, and Z-Wave is another up-and-coming one that's, that's trying to replace the old X10 stuff. But. but with tablets now and a 99 cent app, you can control all the lights from your iPad, your Android, whatever it is. Uh, so they send a signal to themselves wirelessly rather than through the house wiring. A great thing about it, which makes them a lot more reliable, is it will send that code and it keeps checking it. If it doesn't actually activate the, the light, it keeps sending the code until it does. So really, really um, responsive and, and reliable in somebody's house. So if you're controlling something on the, on the other side of the house, you don't know if it's turned on or not. With these, uh, it just keeps sending that signal two or three times until it actually turns on. This is where things get expensive. UCAT, we don't sell any of the devices. Uh, we have some favorites. We don't get kickback or anything. Just a small little disclaimer about some of these that uh, we're going to show you. So here's a quick overview of some that we'll show you today. The Relax 3, pretty inexpensive, 750 bucks. I think it's gone up a little bit since then, probably closer to 1000 uh, a James unit, uh, fairly inexpensive also. You can just see they go anywhere from 750 up to 5,000 plus. And that's, <clears throat> that's the base unit. Each time, you, if you want to be able to do the bed, then bed controllers are typically another $1,000 on top of it. Phones, depending on which phone you go with, they can be 700 to $1,500 for phone capability and stuff. So the price can jump up there pretty fast. The first one is the uh, Relax 3. It's a really good unit. I've really liked this one and I've recommended it many times and there's probably, oh I don't know, 20 or more people that I know of that, that are using this. Uh, you can plug in any switch on the side, sip and puff, eye switch, whatever it might be. I'll demonstrate with this little switch. It starts scanning across the top, giving me options. Phone, TV, VCR, auxiliary, and X10. So I hit this button. It scans. I'm going to stop it. Press the button again when it hits X10. And then it starts scrolling down, giving me different options. So if I was using a telephone, answer, hang up, directory, speed dials, it has powers, channel up, channel down, volume, uh, but I'm in X10. I'm going to stop it on five, which will activate my light and my fan. I can control a lot of things in the home. The uh, 750 is without a phone. We add an infrared phone, it, it jumps the price up to probably about $1,700. Uh, but works really well. Uh, the James, I don't have to show you, but it's uh, similar to this Relax 3, but you can also touch the buttons that you see up there. Uh, the next one, 
the Sage Powerhouse. Uh, this is when we start getting into voice activation. So it's how this one works. You wear a wireless headset. It's got a battery on the side. Uh, again, we use a button. And what that button's doing is telling it when to start listening to him. So hit that button after the beep. Say radio. Radio on. Just radio. Radio. Good job. Radio off. There you go. And you don't train it to your voice. So anyone in the room with a, a good strong voice or a clear voice could put that on, whether you're male or female, and it would work right away. Uh, the next one is the Sakari unit. This is another voice-activated uh, product. I'll let Brian explain this, this one to one you. This one is we mount it on the chair, or we do done a lot of times by the bedside. Um, very powerful. It does a lot of the X, it'll be X10 with the radio frequency. A lot of the stuff now is trying to do X10 via IR, which means you have to be pointing at the receiver to get it to do anything. This and you can be anywhere in the house to control things. Um, it has a it has a vocabulary of over a hundred words that could be used multiple times. I mean, on could be used in several different menu trees. Um, it's a very good unit. It starts around five thousand dollars for the base unit. And then accessories on top of it, the phone. You're looking at another thousand, head controller another thousand. But we've had several clients that we've used it with, and it's given them the freedom they need. Uh, this first one I think is pretty loud. Most remarkable Christmas gift arrived today for a Salt Lake quadriplegic, the victim of a shooting six years ago. Ed Yates was there. The shooting in 1997 left Justin Duncan a quadriplegic. Before tonight, a nurse had to turn appliances and TVs on or off and intercept phone calls. But not anymore. Training on this small visual display, Justin's learning how to use a new device funded by the Travis Roy Foundation out of New York, which allows him to make calls or control electronic devices by simply puffing or sipping from his lips. It's on. It's off. For Justin, this Christmas gift is extremely significant. Very important. One of the most important things in my life is independence. Here on the third floor of South Davis Community Hospital, this room has been Justin's home away from home for the past six years. What you see surrounding him here in the room says a lot about who Justin is. Going to college next year, studying, doing things for himself. Once the Utah Center for Assisted Technology refines the connections on this new system, Justin will have more control over his life. Ed Yates, Eyewitness News, Bountiful. Nice story. I'll see. Uh, I'll see if you, can, if you can hear this one. He had a uh, vent running in the background. Uh, if you can't hear it very well, I'll, I'll just turn it off. Tell us a little bit about what having the ECU, what kind of difference it's made for you being able to have control of your environment? All right, having this uh, psych here, I call it my tower of power because it does give me control of a number of items Not only just here in the bedroom, but also at the, at the front door, the light outside. Um, I can control the lamp in here, the TV, the satellite, the VCR, my iPod, just a, a, a number of things that I was never able to do before. And it's nice. Wireless communication. This is something that they talked about on Star Trek many years ago. And uh, I really like it. There are a few kinks that need to be ironed out in it time to time, it seems like. What, what was it like before you got it, when you went? Before I got this? Oh, 
prosperity was it before you were able to, to have to build it? Yeah. Before I was able to do this, yep. my frustration came out on my wife, Angela. And we would have our runarounds because anything that I needed done, she would have to do it for me. She cannot be available to me 24 7 right here. I mean, she may be out in the, out in the kitchen doing something. Uh, she may be sitting with her sister, uh, watching TV, watching a certain program, that I would be watching something different in here. And, uh, like I said, I can't have her in here 24-7 at my whim. Mm -hmm. yeah. So the speech recognition has, has really improved not only my quality of life, but also Angela's quality of life, since I don't have to yell for her all the time. But it's other good. than the same yes. speech recognition is wonderful. It's improved my quality tremendously. Yeah, that's great. And I'm going to let you talk to my wife now and see what she has to say on the subject. What kind of a difference does it make for you being able to like, be able to control the things yourself? Oh, it's really been great. It's given him freedom and also me. So I'm not in the middle of stirring a pot of chili or something on the stove, and then when I come back here, I forget about it, and then I eat virtually. So that's one thing I've lost, so it's really nice. It's given me, like he said, I also am independent of him, and he has his own independence, so we can both operate separately and still be available, so it's nice. Yeah. But I think it's been tremendous for him, and I like it too. I like it too because I can go down the stairs, and... Or washing on. He can go about doing what he's doing. And, but I would say mostly with his voice recognition, yeah. for him to have the ability to basically have total control of his environment is, like he says, overwhelming. And he, yeah. he's absolutely in control of Because if he needs, and sometimes it's just something so simple like raising the head of the bear. And I don't have to come back here and raise it or lower the bear or uh, another one that we used, I don't have a uh, AugCom device with me today, but uh, as you go out and people are using augmented communication devices, uh, a little dynamite or uh, any of them, uh, that's what he was using. We went and set him up. Uh, this was Cal. He had ALS. Uh, as he progressed over the years, you helped him out quite a bit. Uh, in the end stages, he lost his uh, ability to, to speak, uh, lost almost all functionality, I think, uh, other than he could move a finger, and that's about all he could control <clears throat> in his final days there. Uh, this point now, he had a little cush ball switch by his head, so he could control the dynamite to talk to his wife. He could change channels on his TV, uh, do all these environmental controls just from the augmentative communication device. So we had it set up to, for him to call his wife. We adapted a, uh, a wireless doorbell, plugged it into this. He would hit that, uh, and she would just wear it on her belt so she could go out in the garden, around the house to do laundry, <clears throat> and she'd come up and help him if he needed it. So he had a, uh, a final day where he called it his, uh, do you remember what he called it? I don't know, let's call it a, his emancipation day or something like that where he, uh, he chose a certain day that he was just going to have him turn off the machines and uh, go to a better place, he said. So uh, this was his final message that he typed out when UCAT went over. You have to know your limits and then adapt to those. So he was using, uh, using this for all sorts of things, but uh, uh, just an amazing guy. Something how it really changed his life. Uh, let me show you a couple other things before I wrap up here. Some people, as I said earlier, they just want to control uh, 
Oh, my batteries might be dead. No. Nope. They just want to control TV. When I worked uh, for independent living, well, and, and for UCAT as well, we go out to people's homes and, you know, what are the things you'd like to do? I just want to change the TV by myself. Uh, so we have a couple different devices that will do that. This is the Voice IR, which is probably the best uh, voice remote on the market, about $250, is that right? Yeah. Uh, you can control four different devices. You can see the four different buttons here. You train a code word that it's listening for, and then you can start training. Uh, you 30 commands under each of the four. Did. 30 commands? Under each of the four buttons. So let me see if it will work for me. Mike, uh, one of our other staff members at UCAT, thinks it's been dropped and isn't working very well. Television? Say your command. Power. Power. So pretty good one. Sits next to somebody's bed. Um, television? Say your command. Uh, let me change the channel. In about, well, in about uh, 10 minutes, I programmed a couple commands in here. You can do it really quick. You could probably go into somebody's house and within an hour have it all programmed to four different devices. Really quick and easy. We had to program that the four or five into it so that it knew that that's the channel it's going to go to. Basically, the, the tedious thing with this one is if you're in a menu system and you've got 500 channels to go through, it's TV. It tells you what to say, page up, and you say TV again, and it goes into sequence. So to make it faster, you can program in segment points along the way, at least like TV 500, so you're into the movie channels, or that kind of thing. But just some ways to make it a little bit faster, <coughs> but it can be a little bit tedious the way it works. But for the price, it's <coughs> one of the most reliable ones out there for doing, being able to control infrared devices. Uh, another one that we have <clears throat> that we've had fair success with. You can uh, program this one so it's always listening. But a great one about this one is uh, you can plug in a power supply so you're not replacing the batteries daily on it. But this is similar to that one. Y you program in a keyword. So this is called the surfboard. Uh, just as the default keyword, it's surfboard. So I'd say surfboard and it would bleep, bleep, it would bleep. Uh, and we can program things in here. Again, I'd say maybe uh, TV, um, same, same exact as this one. It would demonstrate the same way. This one's about $65. Uh, but if you have any questions on this type of stuff, we have a, a pretty good loan bank at UCAT, uh, where if you wanted to try some of this, we'll send it out. If you're within Provo to Logan, we can help you out. And, ship it down to Louie. He's so good anyway, he could set it up. Uh, but we do have stuff that people could borrow. All this X10 stuff. In fact, Ed just came in the other day and we gave him some stuff to try out. So uh, it's nice to try it with them, obviously, before we recommend it. Uh, any of these units that, we showed, that we've shown you today, we do have as loaners. Anything you can think of, Brian? That's pretty much it. Okay, Alma. <laughs>